Hi there, my name's Michael. Um, just want to give you a quick overview and a bit of review of the DD hammock that I've got. Uh, this model is the top end model. It's called the DD Superlight Jungle Hammock or Jungle Superlight Hammock. And it's supposed to be like a two in one system that you can use as a hammock. You could also use it as a tent on the ground. Um, I'll give you a bit of an overview of how it all works. As you can see, I've got it set up with like a tarp, uh, a fly sheet over it. That's to keep the sun and the rain off. That's something that you get separately. Uh, the actual um, hammock cost I think it was a couple of hundred dollars, $300. Um, and there's several different aspects of that. But let me just show you how it all works first. So basically you need a, obviously a couple of trees or posts or something, about four meters, three meters apart, a little bit more than five, six meters apart. So it's held on with these things called whoopee slings, which are like um, easy uh, to hang things. They don't damage the tree. Uh, you just wrap them around a couple of times and then you've got a carabiner there and that attaches to the actual cord, which holds the hammock up. And it looks very, very thin and narrow, but it is actually enough to hold a heavy fat human being like myself. And you see the hammock has got a mozzie net on, which is uh, held up with a couple of poles. You've got, you've got like your collapsible poles, just like on a tent and they just insert through these loops here and the actual poles are held kind of taut by a couple of uh, elasticated uh, cords there which you just clip onto the end here and inside you would have your sleeping bag and you can adjust the actual uh, height and the whether it's level or not of the hammock with these cords here it's hard to see but you actually it's got a very ingenious system where you basically pull on this one or you pull on this one and you can adjust the length quite easily. So you've got your poles put in, you've got your hammock up. Um, it's actually also got, a, you can't see it here, but it's got a rain cover which I've tucked in underneath because we're not using it because we've got the main cover. And it's also got an under blanket and you need an under blanket or you need something underneath you because otherwise you get really cold underneath on your back and on your backside. Um, this hammock actually does have like a double layer underneath, so you could actually just slot in like a, a uh, an air mat or something, or you could even just sleep on top of an air mat. But I found, and a lot of people comment on this, that it, if you sleep on an air mat and a hammock, it tends to just like slide around and doesn't cover all of you, and it's pretty awkward and uncomfortable. It's just a lot easier to have either. You can make a do it yourself sleeping bag which you can strap on underneath. This one that I actually bought from the hammock makers, you can't see it very well. Just a sleeping bag and they've actually got proper clips it just clips on clip four clips and it's really easy it just sits there and you can tighten it and loosen it and so then yeah you've got your tarp which is a separate thing it's a three by three meter dd tarp which costs less than a hundred dollars and there's various ways of pitching that i've just got your traditional bivouac style just like a triangle you can do them diamonds all kinds of different shapes um, depending on where the sun is and the wind is and that will keep the sun off you and I've used it in the rain and it keeps the wind and rain off you as well so I've, I've slept out in a, a rain shower like continual rain overnight and that worked really well for me so I find it's better to use the hammock with just the mozzie net there is like I said a, a rain cover you can put over it I find that a bit claustrophobic and in the Australian climate a bit um, humid uh, you don't get a lot of air in there and it's, I just found it hard to sleep in it so I just chucked it off relied on the uh, on the fly this thing here you might also see I've just bought this this is just like a sleeve which when you finish with a hammock if you don't want to pack it all up into all the separate bags if you're moving camp and you just want to set up again somewhere else you just basically just put it all into that and that was like a sort of a quick uh, packing system so there you've got your whoopee cord on again and you can see here, I've just done a few little uh, modifications. So I'm just using bungee cords to hold this, uh, the fly taut there. And it's useful to learn a few knots when you get hammocking. I mean, apart from your obvious ones, uh, there's one here, which you can't really see it. It's called Prussic Knot, which you just attaches onto a cord. And so it keeps that from moving up and down, or you can adjust it. And the other useful knot, which you can't really see, but it's just a quick release knot for tying on your cords to trees. And if, if you look on YouTube, there's plenty of people who show you how to tie a quick release knot. And then when you want to get rid of it, just pull that and it comes out. You know, one of this unpicking stuff and fingernails getting bent. So there you go, a prussic knot there. That's it. Um, let's give you a quick look inside. 
I haven't got a sleeping bag inside. I've just put a, a bag inside just to weight it down because it just tends to overturn. In the bag itself, in the hammock, sorry, should I say, it's got like a little uh, ridge line line which keeps the mozzie net off you. You probably can't see here, but it's actually got like a little pocket which rolls along there. And that's actually really useful for sticking your glasses, your phone, your torch, whatever you've got there, because once you're in the actual hammock, if you've got anything in the hammock, whether it's a book or whatever, it all tends to slide down to the bottom like this and get under this. It's really awkward. I won't go on about the uh, actual uh, sleeping in the hammock, but it's basically, it's a really comfortable sleep. Um, it's just a case of you have to faff around with it a bit to get it level. Whoops. Um, but I find it's really good sleeping. People say oh, it's uh, too squashed or restricting. I don't find that. It does take a bit of getting used to. You have to basically sleep on your back or at a slight angle. You can't sleep on your side. I'm a side sleeper usually, but I, I found that didn't bother me because you just get such a comfortable sleep. And there is a way of actually, I thought I'd be sleeping like banana shape because of the bend in the hammock. But there is actually a way of you sleep at a slight angle. So you kind of about 20 degrees. So your head's over one side, your feet are slightly diagonal on the opposite side and that flattens you out again. You can read all about that on all these hammocking forums. They tell you all about this. But basically, you get a really good night's sleep. I reckon a lot better than you do when you're sleeping on an air mat on the ground. And that's it. That's the hammock. I've been carrying it in all the stuff. The only setback is you've got a bit more gear than you would in a tent because you've got your under blanket. But I found it all goes to one of these bike bags. So that's your hammock, the fly, the tarp, the... Uh, under blanket and all the pegs and lines and everything probably it weighs a bit more than if you're used to ultralight camping and a couple of kilos or kilos this weighs about three or four kilos i still found it i mean i don't know about backpacking but certainly bike packing on the uh little uh foldable bike it all fit there really well so that's it uh just one last thing the other good thing about hammock is compared to a tent you're kind of more outdoors, you're more, uh, you know, you're getting fresh air, but also you can't see here, but uh, when you actually sit in it, it's kind of like a, sitting on a bench, so you don't need to bring your own separate seat. You can just sit around all day, read books and cook, and if you haven't got the fly there, you can, uh, I used to just sit there and reading and brewing up tea and stuff. So it's a really handy setup. There we go. Hope you enjoyed the review. I've uh, just to let you know, I've used it for about more than a week, about eight or nine days. I did a cycle trip down the southern coast of New South Wales and into Victoria. I found it good because you could set up in places kind of like, I can't really see here. This is a good, like this would be a good camping spot. It's actually a picnic place, but you can imagine this being a, like a park. But you can set it up in places like where there's a slope or where there's the ground isn't suitable for a tent because it's too rocky or sandy or wet. Uh, or you can even set it up in the bush, you know, something like that, as long as you've got a bit of a clear between two trees. You do need fairly narrow trees. You, you get like, when you set against trees that size, it's getting a bit of a problem. But you can pitch it in a lot of places where you wouldn't be able to put a, camp, a tent. So you don't need a campsite. And that was the main advantage. And the main reason I used it was because I couldn't book into campsites at Christmas. So I just went and camped in the bush, just what they call wild camping, and it worked really well. So I used it for seven days, took a bit of a learning curve, a couple of days in the garden and in the local park, learning how to set it up. But once I got it all practiced, it was really easy to set up and put down and move around, and pack up. And like I said, I used it for a week and it worked really well and I got really good sleep. So I give it the thumbs up. All right, that's my review. Thank you. Bye.